Hey guys, Fast from X Force again with Scott from X Force, and today we've got one of the most anticipated and long awaited blasters of the year, probably the old Tommy. Um, so, the old Thompson, Tommy Gun, Chicago Typewriter, Cheap uh, Sheet Incoming, Cheap Sheet, <laughs> cheap sheet <laughs> cheap Incoming, sheet. indeed, Trench Boom. Chicago Piano, Chicago Typewriter, Typewriter, I said that, Tommy Gun, you know, anyway, there's a whole heap of uh, names for this one. And it, we got it in, in two um, forms. type forms, and that's the M1A1, which was the one that was used in World War II and after, and the 1928A1, which is the drum mag one with the front wooden grip uh, which was used a lot in the 1920s sort of Prohibition uh, era Prohibition era by a lot of the gangs and FBI and I don't know if the police or whatever yeah. used it back then Dick Tracy, that's what I think about when I think of the Tommy Gun I think Dick, Dick Tracy Al Capone Al Capone maybe, yeah but no, Dick, I don't know why I, I must have watched a bit of comic book stuff, you know so <laughs> Dick Tracy, man um, so, you know, this is really one of the most legendary rifles of, well, it's of our icon. times. It's iconic. Uh, and I've got to say, I'm pretty excited to sort of get these in. A lot of people kind of commented, oh, you know, they should have been wood and metal. Yes, they should have. I would have loved to bring them in metal and wood. Uh, but unfortunately, nobody... Um, out of those airsoft companies that do have them like that uh, convert them or are looking at converting anytime soon that we know of uh, it might change sooner or later but until then it is what it is now in saying that a lot of you guys really would need to grab one of these and hold it in your hand because I gotta say there's some pretty decent weight in here now um, when I go and Sort of read on the actual uh, Thompsons, they were actually quite a heavy uh, submachine gun, as they were called. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they were very, for what they are, I mean, they're quite a skinny, long, you know, you think you look at it and you're like, man, I think skinny, there's not much to it. But obviously, having all that metal and, and I mean, this barrel is solid, yeah. Uh, I mean, all the wood bits, it, it was a heavy uh, rifle. Um, now, in as is, I don't know, I put around two, yep. maybe around the two kilos. I haven't put on a, a set of scales, but it is a pretty, you know, pretty sort of heavy uh, blaster. Can't wait, shame it. No, so, but I mean, if you're running this on the field, I've got to tell you, the way it is, if you're holding it like this for a while, yep. it's going to get pretty heavy. And that's as is. If you had this in wood and full metal, mm. and I guarantee you some of you blokes uh, would definitely have sore arms probably after about 10 minutes. Yeah. It, it would be way too heavy. Uh, I'm not trying to defend or anything. I'm just telling you, you, you have to hold it to, to really appreciate the weight of as is. It's the first drop stock. It's, and it's a drop stock. It's a drop stock. It's a speedy boy. It's a speed, yeah, it's a first speedy boy <laughs> weapon out. It's a drop stock, damn yeah, it. Man. Uh, it's probably a little bit too heavy for the speedy boys and too long. The, the actual, the funny thing is, I didn't really understand or, or really have a concept of the length of this uh, gun until you actually try to shoulder it, put it, put it on your shoulder, like shoulder it. And it, you really got to, like, just to grab your, your, uh, full guard. your, yeah, your hand guard or whatever. It, it, you really got. I got to stretch. Well, I'm not a short. I'm not a tall guy. I'm pretty average height. But I really got to stretch my arm to get over here. And we actually put it up against. I think it was Drew's scar, and it was only slightly. And I'm not kidding about. Probably about that much shorter than the scar, from, you know, one end to the other. So that's got to tell you. Like it's quite a long, mm. because you're kind of looking from the back of the receiver to the the tip there 
and you kind of forget how long this stock is. Yeah. That's a really long stock. Um, anyway, let me sort of dig into, get my little chip sheet and dig into a little bit of the history of it. Uh, so the Thompson submachine gun um, was invented by uh, General J John T. Thompson in 1918. It was originally designed uh, for World War I, but it wasn't finished in time for it. Um, so it was released after around the 1920s. Uh, it became notorious during that era of uh, no alcohol allowed. Prohibition. <laughs> the prohibition. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that now these days? I was actually thinking about that. You know, all these COVID passports. Now I have, I have a alcohol passport. I don't drink. <laughs> I'm doing <laughs> fine. I barely drink. But I'm like, you know, that, that'll be some uh, some hard times, huh? Um, anyway, so it was used as a signature weapon uh, of many organized crime syndicates in the United States in the 1920s. It was a common sight in the media at the time, used by both law enforcement officers and criminals. Um, I mean, being what it was, a lot of the rifles at that time were all bolt action. Yeah. So when you got this thing that's shooting full auto, man, this thing would have been like an absolute weapon back then. It'd be like the AK of the times. Yeah. Um, very, you know, not very accurate, uh, but hey, when you've got a drum mag that holds, you know, how many, how many rounds does that thing, like 50? I can't count. Yeah, I don't know. It was a lot of rounds. Somebody please uh, write it down. I haven't put it on in my cheap sheet. I forgot to probably add that bit in there. Um, so was, the firearm was widely, uh, widely adopted by the US military during World War II. So World War II, so that was literally the 1928 release, um, 1928A1, and then the M1, M1A1, that's what was used in the World War II by the Allied troops during the war. Well, during, during the war. It was designed in the 1928A1, M1, and M1A1. Um, and during the World War II, 1.5 million uh, guns were made. Uh, that's a lot, and that's during that, that time, not counting all the other years and whatever. So there's a, there would have been a whole heap of these uh, puppies around at that time. It was the first weapon to be labeled and marked as a submachine gun. Um, so the first Thompson entered production as the M1921. It was available to civilians, but because of the weapon's high price, initially saw poor sales. So at the time, they were selling, uh, was priced around 200 US dollars. Now in 1921, that was equivalent to around 3,000 US dollars, which would be roughly around four thousand Aussie dollars yeah. now. So this would have been a four thousand dollar gun, uh, which is that's pretty mm. hefty sort of price on on what it is. Um, now this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. I had to sort of just add this little bit in here because a lot of guys were going off about the box. So this is the really disappointing bit. The guns are actually quite great. I mean. I'm, you know, I can't sort of knock them much, but the box, now the box is something else. They, they, they literally just printed a big piece of card, card, not, not even, not even, like, not even thick, it's probably one mil thick. That's card. And wrapped it around <laughs> this foam sort of cutout of the Thompson, uh, which is quite nice inside. But the rest well, of it is just very flimsy. For the stop and think campaign, you should have a locked bag or box anyway. That's right. So, now the only good thing that I kind of showed somebody, I said, well, if I was going to get a case, all you got to do is take this insert, mm -hmm. chuck it in your case. Drop it in. Bob's your Because it's got the, the cutouts for your stick mag as well as your drum. Yep. Even you we'll put your charger. Yeah, you, you kind of got a little bit of everything. It's, it's a nice and, bar up here. Yep. Nice foam, so good yeah. protection. Ah, oh, beautiful. So a little bit saddened on the on the box, but on the box actually the pictures of is a typewriter, which is the Chicago typewriter, and then a whole heap of Chinese troops. Somebody was going, what's going on with the Chinese? It's an American gun. 
Why is it Chinese, guys? Because it was made in China, but anyway, let's go back to the cheat sheet. <coughs> so, uh, the M1921 Thompsons were sold in small quantities to the United States Postal Inspection Service so they could protect the mail from, spa from a spate of robberies. It was also sold to the United States Marine Corps who used their Thompsons in the Banana Wars, which was a war was uh, done throughout the South America or the Central South American uh, countries. Then the Thompsons were also widely used throughout China, where several Chinese warlords and the military factions running various parts of the fragmented country made purchases of the weapon and subsequently produced many local copies. And even, the, even back then in the 20s, China was China, man. God, no was, copyright. They were copying, man. They were copying. Imitation's and, a form of flattery. Hey, if it was good, why not copy it? Mm. You know, now we're going to copy a turd. <laughs> so, right. Awesome, awesome gun. Now we've got it as a blaster. So I'll run it through a little bit. Um, yes, it's plastic 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 so it's not wood it's a nice looking wood it's plastic yeah. though it is it you know so we've got it in three three shades of wood which is the dark the light and the red wood um we've got it in all the m1a1 mm -hmm. i think the i've got another shipment as some of you guys know coming in the in the 1928s i've got it in red and light so i don't have the dark yet um, but i kind of like i don't know some guys would they like the dark i actually like the light um like the red you like the red it's like a cedar yeah i'm not really big into red woods uh i'm more the light or the dark but i don't know that dark that dark is too browny for me it's chocolate it's a chocolatey brown this one actually really has a nice sort of uh, texture, wood yeah. texture on it so i really kind of dig that and well the good thing with the light one is it's not just an exact like one like tone like it's a 100 kind of level it's you got a, a 40 and an 80 so it actually has a bit of variance into it. it's not just mm. one carbon copy of a color yeah it'll actually fool you actually thinking that oh is that actually From the, wood? yeah you know you gotta like kind of look twice hold on yeah. oh yeah no hold on that's not <laughs> so um now battery goes in the stock um you pull that little tap down and then pick it good. sweet as it's very cabinets. simple very quick it has a xt30 plug which i really like much better than the mini to me is mm. smaller um, and heaps of space in there for a decent sized battery all right and that's all silver wide so very quick access to your battery um, you know stock is solid uh, it's it's still you know i wish they'd probably sort of uh, get, a, get a little bit more solid you know could have been a little bit more solid like it's not a flimsy stock but it's you know could have sounded could have been a little bit more filled maybe yeah but it's sound deadening kind of yeah um if you're really picky about that though uh a little bit of uh expander foam you get from bunnings will actually be like a sound deadener. it'll give yeah. it a bit more of a, a solid click after yeah. your 30 days yeah yeah um the receiver is nylon but that's actually because of the the slim line sort of body that it has it, it's actually mm. not that bad like i i was sort of humming and ahhing about that I don't mind it you, you kind of don't miss the metal being there because it's actually quite a solid uh, piece being one piece it's, there's not a lot of moving parts and no add-ons and whatever you know it doesn't feel like a gen 8 and there is a fair bit of because it's got that chunkiness to it mm. it doesn't feel like a cheap because it's fairly thick as well yeah so it's got that body and weight to it yeah and I've got to change on the website because we previously believed it was going to be a V6 gearbox. Yep. It's actually a V3, but it's a weird V3. It's not your standard, typical V3 we've seen in the past, like AKs and all that. It's different. 
Um, so it is a yeah quite a different uh, um, gearbox, and we've gone in there. We've done a little bit of tweaking. So out of the box, I will take you guys and show you. It shoots around the 250 mark. Um, now, one of the reasons it has an M80 uh, spring in it, and um, I probably could do with a little bit more seal around the cylinder, cylinder head. head. Now, we've done that one. Yep. We've chucked an M, an X Force M100 spring in there and just a little bit of the seal around the cylinder head and it's shooting around the 340 i'm told but again we'll whack a few shots with that and show you guys so very slight upgrades you can get these things shooting quite nicely uh, metal gears um, and all the rest does a pretty good job so magazine typical sort of you know stick mags they hold probably around 100 odd gels very similar to probably your your vectors in the mm. past um, and easy to get to so the good thing with actually I haven't tried can we? Mm -hmm. you could kind of open and fill them without even taking them out uh, but it's gonna be hard <laughs> but it's doable so that's cool all right so and the mag release is really weird so as you can see i will bring you guys a bit closer but you can see this mag release comes around kind of your um, where your trigger is kind of looks like a trigger guard in a sense on on the top <laughs> and then you just push it up so it, it's kind of in a weird it is sort of in a weird because it's kind of hard to get to in a sense uh, but the really cool thing is the mags go on this track here mm. so there's not much your placements usually yeah as long as you can get in there your placements gonna be smack on so yeah you, you, there's no issues with oh you know once once you've got on that track bang it's there's no oh is it in is it's it going to come out it's not going to come yeah. out it's once it locks it locks it's it's a very good system uh, and you won't catch your your springs like you do with some of the AKs yeah like the gen uh, 11 mm. Uh, we had a lot of people catching when they try getting it in, so at least it's going to look after your springs a lot better as well. Yeah. Um, barrel is all metal, so all this front end is, is that bit heavier. They have put some weights in the back here, so it's quite well balanced. Um, I'm not going to try and balance it on my hand, but as you can see, it's, you know, it's quite a well balanced mm. um, weapon. Size of it blaster <laughs> um yeah i mean other than that to me i'm i'll be honest i'm a fan of the drum mag um i can kind of see myself sort of you know really getting in there you went through a fair few downstairs yeah i did I, I kind of get a bit you know i kind of lose control a little bit so the difference between these two both will take both mags, all right? So literally it's the same thing, except the 1928 does have a different out, uh, mm -hmm. barrel. It's got those lines, and you've also, you obviously got the, the grip Straight instead grip. of the, the wooden handguard. And obviously the drum mag. So now the drum mag, let me get to this thing. <laughs> the weight of a landmine. Yeah, it's literally a landmine. This thing's solid. It's, I think it's cast. Yep. It's like a skillet. Yeah. So the beauty with that is you can cook eggs when you go camping. Oh, you could cook eggs. Come on, really? Um, it's going to get pretty hot in summer, mm. <laughs> but being that it won't rust yeah. like a lot of the metal mags that we normally have with our gels. Uh, it should be pretty good uh, when it comes to rust. Um, and yeah, it just adds some that serious feel. like. Mm. The 1920 really does, like when, you, when you're holding it, it's got some serious weight. Like, yeah, if you're going to hold it up here, but I mean, really, most guys will be mm. gone. Oh, Your yeah. gangster cosplay, pimps and hoes, bucks, knights and stuff would be oh, perfect yeah. for it. Where the straight stick mag is your, your World War II, Vietnam kind of sergeant kind of feel. 
more uh, more army. This is yeah. more bad boy. That's pinstripe suit. That's OD green fatigue. Yeah. We were gonna do a pinstripe thing, uh, but you know it's kind of a mix. So you know, unless we're yeah. gonna do just this one. <laughs> um, so, but I, that's that's my go-to. I love it. Um, that mag will probably hold a few good hundred gels in there. I think uh, Ray from my store said it holds a, a small speed loader full. Oh, that would be about five, I'd say. Yeah. Five to six hundred. Yeah. So that's pretty good. Um, yeah. Now, oh, um, I'm more of a fan of the stick mag, but with the uh, redwood. Yep. So, um, the other thing. I'll do a quick. So, if you're gonna be looking for uh, to swap your, you can either swap your batteries to an XT30, which we do have XT30s, um, or I've got the other one, um, or change the plugs on your blaster. Up to you. So I just want to quickly show you guys. Ah, uh, so we've got the switches here, we've got two of them, which is just a little bit different to most blasters. So we've actually got a safe and fire, and then we've got a semi and full auto. Yeah. So actually it says full auto and single. So I'm going to go full auto, and then, oh look at that. So I mean, this bolt just comes back. Reciprocating. Oh yeah. I mean that just sounds so good. Oh, just every time I hear it. Yeah. All right, I'm good. And that's the guy that pays my wage. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. It's a good thing we didn't have any of these back in my day. All right, so that's how it sounds. It sounds so good. It does have a nice ring. Every time I hear it, it's just yeah. That Brings a smile to your face. Something comes out of me. I don't know if it's a good thing. It's your inner gangster. Yeah, inner gangster. All right, so that's the Thompson sort of uh, in a in a nutshell. Um, so like I said, you know, quality wise, I know some guys do want that metal. It ain't a deal breaker i can tell you guys we had guys come in once they held it they were like oh wow mm. this thing's actually quite heavy so before you knock it please come down um i was slightly skeptical but once i've held it and fired it i tell you what i'm sold on it um i would still like to see a wood kit for it uh, and see how that goes but you know we'll see how we go with that it sort of depends for weight really yeah yeah I mean weight and what add on price so the other thing was a lot of guys were saying oh the price the price so the way I kind of explain it, it because it's not an M4 these guys had to make it literally from scratch um, it's not something that's a mold that's out there a lot it's not something that's made every day it's not a Ford it's not a Holden it's it's kind of a, a unique car in a sense so there haven't been tens of thousands of these things made. So having made a smaller batch, the price is going to be higher, unfortunately. Uh, I'm still always going to look and to find the, the airsoft manufacturers that are going to try and, uh, you know, convert over. convert over to gel ball. Until then, at least we got some. So for the haters, don't buy it. No, <laughs> wait. <laughs> yeah, it'll come. You know, if you've got time. All right, I'm going to bring you guys a bit closer so you can have a better look at it uh, before we go and shoot. It. Yeah, we'll chuck that box right here. All right. Hide your notes. Take it up there. It's been a while since I've done this one. It has been a while. <laughs> Alright, so have a look at that. Like I said, especially this light one, it does 
look pretty good. Like it, it looks like wood to me. Like first things first, I was like, wow. The hand guard's probably not as well all finished in the wood. Um, I wish it was on the same pattern as that. But you've got that differences, so it kind of looks, you know, like hey, it's not More that natural. Same. Yeah, not the same piece of wood. So like I said, that barrel there is all metal. Yeah. In there you got a bit of metal. That's all nice and you can see the scratches mm. sort of starting to come there. That's all metal. The nice writing on there. The scratches add to the realism factor. That's right. Made in USA type one one M one A one automatic electric gun. Electric gun, oh yeah. Um so yeah, metal trigger. The mag is a very, very solid nylon. Um, for some that would have preferred metal, I probably wouldn't. I actually prefer how it is because it's less stress on one point, being yeah. a little bit lighter. That and a few other things, dude. Just less it's issues with uh, rust. Rust and that, yep. Uh, there's a bit of rust on that bit of, bit of metal. <laughs> it's a patina for character. Yeah, it's got character, all right. So there's our, like I said, our um, mag, release. mag release. And our switches, so you fire, you safe. Shows which way the bullets are going. Yeah. All the gels. Fire case. that way, safe that way. And then single and full auto in there, so. And they're actually quite a nice, that's quite a nice uh, switch because, yeah, you can really sort of, you know where you're at with that, you're not confused. <laughs> now, this little slot here, uh, in the box you will get a serial number that will, you know, you can stick on there. It is bright and shiny, so it may throw you off if you're doing a... Yeah. Uh, Submachine gun, military mod, caliber 45, M1A1, nicely written on there. Alright. So there's your redwood. Yeah. Everything else is pretty much similar. That one's got a bit of oil on there, so you might not see it as well. Um, and you can see that 1920 uh, out of the barrel, ribbing. that's that little bit of difference there. So you've got that, you've got the smooth and you've got ribbed. <laughs> <laughs> right. And that, obviously that foregrip. Nice group. Group. I love that foregrip, so comfy. So All right. And then, the jump details on that. Oh yeah. And the details on that drum mag, look at that, wind, 2, 9, 4, 11, clicks. Blah, it doesn't blah. wind, by the way. It doesn't wind, there's not much point for that, So, but it's just a very solid. And you've got under there, on the drum mag, I don't know if I can... You've got a whole heap of writing there, model, clicks, type of magazine, Thompson submachine gun, 50, 50 cartridges. So that would have been about 50 rounds, there you yeah. go, 50 round drum mag. And then, yep, the darker wood. The chocolate. The chocolate. I uh, said, not my uh, cup of tea. I do like chocolate. The only thing is, this is where you can really see, see the difference in color. Um, and you can see sort of where it joins the seams a bit better. So I, that's why I like the lighter. You can't really see those as well. But it's a nice very color. nice, solid feel. It's like a worn, like a dirty worn in. Yeah. So. All right, let's go down and uh, give it. them a bit of a whirl and see how they perform. Hey guys, so with our Thompsons, uh, I've got the 1928A1 and the M1A1 down there um, at our range. So I'm going to run, this is basically a standard. That one has been modified with a uh, M100 spring and improved a air seal. Improved air seal around the cylinder head. So this is, nothing's done, basic standard, a standard get with a 7.4 
battery. Um, if you put an 11 without doing the spring upgrade, the M8 is a little bit slow at come back, so you can get additional feeding, I'm told. Uh, can be, some say no problem, but we're just using a 7.4. So, let's uh, see how we perform. Man, it's a good thing I got glasses. I'm getting with that. They're <laughs> bouncing. Oh yeah. All right, so let's run it through. What gels are you using? I'm using the Exforce Black Label. And those suckers are bouncing yeah. off that target right back in, at me. So I'm kind of shooting myself at the moment. Um, all right. Alright, let's put it on full auto and alright. So like I said, this is standard, no upgrades, um, basic as basic gets. So 245, two uh, I'm gonna call around the 250. Might have been one lower one there yeah, somewhere. Threw it off. Yeah, one 250 is gonna throw it off. 250, look. It's acceptable, it ain't bad. Because in China they've got a policy where they have to be underpowered, um, they do do a lot of underpowering at the moment. So that's the only reason that, I don't know, some way they allow them to have them. All right, so, this bad boy's got the M100, X-Force M100 in it. So, um, I say full auto. So, let's have a look. Oh yeah. Couple of breaks in there, hold on. That's better. That bolt's just a blur on that 11. Woo, it's fast. Now you can run it on 7 or 11, don't matter. Look at that. Hey, come on. Big improvement. Beautifully sitting around that sort of 330 sort of yeah. area. Probably, I had a couple of break-ins in there, so that must have thrown off that um, average. But as you can see, they're all sitting around that 330. So, um, very easy upgrade. I think, you know, you can do that easily in about, I think Drew did in about, 10, 15 minutes um, so shoots great they feel good trust me come on down grab one see how they feel it'll definitely be a, a seller once you sort of uh, understand what they're like um, thanks for watching guys I hope that helps in the meantime don't forget to stop and think uh, put it in a bag take it to your local field and have some fun wear that pinstripe suit and look like some serious gangster or your World War II outfit, whatever, or just rock up in shorts and a singlet, <laughs> whatever tickles your fancy. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys next time with some more goodies.